the book of Ezra. It'll be right before Nehemiah, which is right before Esther and Job and Psalm. Psalms back to the left a little. You should know that if you've been saved a while. Ezra, chapter number 8. The book of Ezra, chapter number 8. One of the Old Testament men here that will read a verse of scripture about. Don't forget now, next Sunday night is our youth service. Getting ready. That's planning for youth rally. Get every young person you can. Last month it was great. The last Sunday night, the month of February. Make your plans to be here next Sunday night. And all the kids you can bring, fill your car up, whatever you got to do, and uh, get them here next, next Sunday night. And then our uh, youth rally, April 27, 28, 29, pray for people's safety. Pray for the, the finances. It's the most expensive time of the year for us. As I said a minute ago, uh, it takes a lot of money. Please pray the Lord will send that in. And uh, pray for the services. Pray for the, every, the atmosphere, the weather. Pray for everything. Now today, uh, we got a very important message. Ezra chapter number 8. And I want you to look at something he did here in the Bible. Look at verse 21. Ezra chapter 8, verse number 21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our, stub, our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we have spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Amen. Now, today, a, a lot of you are, are not going to like what I'm on, what I'm gonna say, but coming to church is not always to make you feel better, right. and and what you want. When you go to the doctor, you don't always like what he says. What would you want a doctor if you go in there and something wrong with you? Say, well, you're just fine. You're looking good. We're, I mean, God loves you, and and we're, you wouldn't want that. You'd say, look, buddy, if I got something wrong, me tell me. You say, well, if you don't want to hear it, tell me anyway. I want to get better. And that's the way church is. You hear what you need to hear. I give you what you need. God gives us what we need. And today, Ezra here, uh, he, said, um, he said, I proclaimed. That means he told everybody. He said, I'm proclaiming a fast. I'm going to talk about this morning the benefits of fasting. Some of you have never heard a sermon on fasting because I've never done this on Sunday morning. Never. Some churches never hear it. Some preachers never preach it. And it, it's sad and it's heartbreaking. But I'm going to tell you something, people. We, we need God to do something in our churches, in our homes, and in our country. We need Him. And... And I'm going to preach about the benefits of fasting. What is fasting? Fasting is deliberately not eating food or drinking beverages in order that God may work in our heart and in our life. It's all through the Bible, all through it, over and over and over. In the book of Esther, chapter 4 and verse 16, they fasted for three days. Daniel, in the book of Daniel, purposed in his heart and fasted. No bread, no beverages for three weeks, 21 days. The average fast in the Bible is one day, most of them, the average fast. The, uh, there's three-day fast in the Bible. There's seven-day fast in the Bible. And, of course, there's 40-day fast in the Bible. We have had at least three, maybe four, people in our church do 40-day fast. 
And Moses started that back yonder in the book of Exodus when the Bible said he went up. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. He went up on that mountain and the Bible said he didn't eat bread or anything. That's supernatural for 40 days. God gave him the Ten Commandments. He came back down. You know the story. Uh, 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 they, were, they were backslid and, and uh, he, he had to go back there and do it again. But that's what happened. In the book of Jonah, a city was saved because people prayed and fasted. Now you think it don't do no good? Jonah went into Nineveh and said, 40 days and you're going to be over there. We're going, God's going to kill every one of you. And buddy, the ruler of that town, the, the king of that t- uh, city said, look, God's going to kill us, y'all. He's fixing to kill every one of us. We're going to get down to business. Time to play is over. We've been to steakhouse 15 times in the last two months. We've been to the fish camp, Mexican food, Chinese food. Hey, God's going to kill us. Let's get down to business. And you know what he done? He proclaimed the fast. He told nobody don't eat nothing. We're going to get down and beg God to have mercy on us. And God spared the whole city. You think it ain't powerful? You think God don't do stuff when people get serious with him? When you get serious enough with God to say, listen, I want you to do something. You notice that scripture I read you? It said that we can seek a right way for us and for our little ones. You know what that fast was about? We're seeking God to show us the right way, God, and for our little ones. All these little girls that stand right here and sing, all these little kids that sing over there, I really, really wish God would do something for our little ones. Many of you have seen revival fires. Many of you have known what it's like to see God move in power. And I have. I've been blessed to be in some of the greatest services in our, in, in, in our, in our day and time. I really believe that. And God's been so good to me. But they've not seen it. And all these kids that come on the bus have not seen it. And all the kids that come up from South Carolina up here on, with Brother Ronnie and them, they haven't seen it. In Judges 20 and verse 26, they fasted. In 1 Samuel 20 and verse 34, they fasted. In 1 Samuel 28 and verse 20, they fasted. 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 12, they fasted. 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 35, they fasted. Uriah, the valiant man and, and an army, when David called him in, you know, when, when David committed that sin, oh, Uriah, come home. He said, I'm not eating. They said, come on in here, man. We're going to make you a big old feast. He said, no, there's time to eat and there's time not to. And now's the time not to. My brethren are out there fighting the battle and the world's going to hell. And, and I can't, I can't, I can't just, 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 just let it go. Put the plate back. I'm not going to eat. Fast before the battle. Jehoshaphat and Ezra here in Second Chronicles 20 and verse 3. And as the scripture that I gave you here today. It's all through the Bible. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament, you think a New Testament ain't started in Acts? You think you ain't under grace in Acts? Don't give me this stuff. It's all Old Testament and all under the law. Paul the Apostle said in fastings often, often, the Apostle Paul, salvation preacher, grace preacher to the Gentiles, grace plus nothing, minus nothing, all by the grace of God, he said, I practiced fasting often. Now, let me introduce this uh, thought here this morning by saying, first of all, I'm just going to hit real briefly the physical benefits of fasting. People say, well, they say you've got to eat three meals. No, you do not. No, you do not. And most of you don't need three because you don't work and you don't move. And if you work real hard, you can have two and a little snack between there in the middle of the day. But if you don't work physically hard, you sure don't need three. There are some people who, because of medical condition, can't fast. I understand that. I understand that. I'm not trying to be your doctor. Uh, and, but, I, but, I, but about three-fourths of the time, that's just an excuse because everybody, you can fast some. If you do got something wrong with you, you can miss a meal, one meal. You can miss two meals. You sure can. And, and so I'm going to talk about the physical benefits of fasting that uh, real doctors know that your body gets full of junk and needs cleansing once in a while. So when you fast, your body composition and fitness gets better. It is a proven fact that fasting will boost your metabolism. It is a proven fact that improves cardiovascular health. That means your heart health. It lowers blood pressure. 
It guarantees you will lower your blood pressure if you will fast right and, and regular. It also lowers your blood sugar. And, of course, the benefits of weight loss, unnecessary weight, and stuff like that. Of glucose, and then burns that fat that's inside you. Cholesterol, same thing. Lowers your cholesterol, and it will in, reduce insulin resistance, lowering your risk for type 2 diabetes. Sure does. I have a preacher friend of mine who uh, had a lot of ear infections. He had all kinds of ear infections on a regular basis. Had to go to the doctor and get on antibiotics all the time. And he said him and a bunch of his men got burdened for their church. And they said, I don't, our, our church ain't moving. Something ain't right. People ain't getting saved. And they started fasting every Saturday. Every Saturday, him and some of his men didn't eat anything all day on Saturday, then went to church on Sunday morning. And he said he noticed God started blessing the church. And then you know what he said? He said, my ear infection quit. He said it cleared up. Now, now that's, that's one of the physical benefits. You'd be surprised the stuff that's wrong with you that could get fixed by fasting. Like, a, haven't you ever noticed when a, dog's, when a dog's sick, it won't eat? You know, you, as, as long as they're eating, they ain't too bad off. But if, if a dog won't eat, you know why that happened? That's nature's way. That's God put that in us. If I've got something wrong with me, and one of my bones, like my knee or whatever, I, I, if i got something wrong with me uh, that your body... If all your body's doing is chopping up food all the time, it ain't got time to work on that thing that's, that's wrong. When I deprive my body of food, there ain't nothing in here, then all my body goes to work on that hurt place and heals it. That's, 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 and that is a medical fact. Uh, it work, goes to work on what's wrong with you. I'm talking about, I know a preacher, and you're a preacher, J. Harold Smith, who he went on one of those long 40-day fasts. He said his tongue turned, turned pink as a little baby. He said every spot, blemish on his skin went away. I've never fasted that long, so I can't tell you that for myself. But I'll tell you one thing. They said it, it, it slows the aging process and enhances longevity. In other words, it'll keep you young longer. It decreases inflammation. If you have inflammation in any part of your body, it'll work on it. It'll have, uh, it helps recovery from injury, as I mentioned also. Those are just physical benefits. That's not even what I'm preaching about. This Those are added benefits you get when you fast. That's not why we fast. There's mental, mental benefits. It renews your mind. I can tell you this. I, I go preach a five-night revival, and when I preach somewhere, I'm off somewhere preaching. I preached uh, Monday night. I preached Tuesday night. On the day I fast, the day that I fast, I fight with my flesh all day long. I struggle just like you do. I get hungry just, and I say, no, no. That's the only way I can do it. I got to make up my mind. Uh, people say, well, I'm going to try to fast. Oh, yeah, you can forget it. You ain't going to. If I say that, I won't make it till 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Uh, but I, I can't say I'm going to try to. I say, bless the Lord, I am. And that's the only way I can do it. I mean, you, you might be a lot stronger than me. The only way I can do it is make up my mind. And, uh, but anyway, uh, when I'm preaching off somewhere that night, on the day that I fast, and I'm, I'm not kidding, I noticed this a time or two, and I thought, was that just an accident? And I noticed it over. My mind was as clear as a bell. I could think of stuff, and when I was up preaching, thoughts would just come in like, bam, where'd that come from? Bam, where'd that? If you've never preached, it's hard for you to understand what I'm saying, but it, it was clear. Your, your thoughts were clear. That's why, you ever notice after you eat, you don't, you want to go to sleep, and you're sluggish. You can't think. It clears your mind up. You have a little siesta uh, there for a little while. Uh, so, the mental benefits of fasting. Well, let me, let me ask you a question here. Are you a food aholic? Are you addicted to food? Most Americans are. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You better believe it. Here's the way you know you're a foodaholic. Let me put, ask you a few questions. Do you eat real fast when you're at a, so you can just get more on your plate and eat some more? I do. I do. I do that. When I'm at a buffet, I'd get all I can on my plate so I can see how much more I can get on my plate. Second question, do you want to eat when you're disappointed or unhappy? You're just like a drunk. They say, you got my feeling, I'm going to go get drunk. I'm unhappy, I'm going to go get... See, that's an excuse to binge on that food. Am I right? You know, every time you get sick, well, I'll just go buy me some ice cream. 
That's an excuse. That's what you want to do anyway. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's an excuse uh, because you're, you're feeding your habit. And I do the same thing. I ain't fussing at you. You know, a drunk, a, a man's a drunk or a drug addict. If somebody's on drugs, if they're sad, they say, I'm just going to get drunk. If they're happy, it's my birthday, I'm going to get drunk. I say, it don't matter what, you're going to get drunk. And I say, are you that way with food? Next question, do you nibble and snack all day long waiting on the time to really eat? God help. What a bunch of losers in here today. Yeah, I know people say, I know people, what about, listen, it's, it's a dumb thing to put a bowl of candy out on the table and in the living room and all that, because every time you go by there, I'm going to grab. I, so I've not even been thinking about it. And then go by there and there's some candy. Oh, I want one of them. That's right. I told her, I said, keep the food up. We had seven people stay at the house last night. They'll eat you out of the house and home. I mean, hide it. I mean, if you see it, you want it. Ain't that right? That's the best. Don't never go grocery shopping when you're fasting. You'll buy $500 worth of stuff. You know when you go to grow your groceries? Right after you eat supper. Anyway, I ain't got time to get off on all that. Do you eat until you feel uncomfortable? Next question. Do you feel like you have to have something to eat before you go to bed at night? Tell you one worse than that. Do you get up in the middle of the night and go to the refrigerator? Next question. Is food your first thought when you wake up or get off work or get through doing something or just get home? That's bad. That's bad. Let's talk about the physical benefits of fasting, the mental benefits of fasting, but what's important this morning, the spiritual benefits. The spiritual benefits. We don't fast for the physical and uh, mental, uh, mental benefits. Those are just extras. So uh, uh, I, if you look at me and think I'm being mean, I'm not, I'm not. You say, oh my goodness, here we go again. Uh, he's going to fuss at us and I wish he wouldn't do that. i tell you what you ought to do. You ought to shake my hand, thank you. And thank me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help. Listen, I care about your kids. And I'm telling you this morning, Brother Mike was hitting on it in Sunday school. We're living in a wicked time, people. Wicked, evil. The average church member is so full of sin and the world. There is no power. There is no Holy Ghost moving in church services. No old-fashioned revival much anymore. And I'm telling you, if we don't get a, get a grip on this thing, and if you'll listen to me and take heed, this may be the most important sermon you ever heard in your life or the most in a long time. I may be adding years to your life if you'll listen to me this morning. And I may be getting, helping you to get health to your body body and I may be helping yep, you see your kids and your grandkids and get on fire for God and live for God. All right? That, I do that this morning. Let me, let me just say, well, I'll, I'll tell you how bad off people are. We got people sitting in here this morning saying, oh God, I hate it when he does this. He's going to make me feel guilty and make me want to, and I know the youth rally's coming, but good night. I don't care. That's the average person's attitude in here. If you don't care, you really need to fast. Fast till you do care. It's a shame when people sitting right here in our own church and our own youth rally won't fast one meal and we get texts from girl ladies in other states like we did the other day saying, when, what date's the youth rally? When does the fasting start? I want to be a part of it. That live 500 miles from here. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I believe God has ordained fasting and praying as a means. What, you, what you're doing is you're humbling your soul and you're saying, I want God more than I want that food. I want God to answer my prayers and move. Listen, wouldn't you like to see the Lord do something great? Wouldn't you like to see the Holy Ghost come down and shake our county and get a hold of our kids so that you'd, I mean, I, sometimes I have to preach hard on come to church faithful, come to church faithful. I, I shouldn't even have to say that if everybody's where they need to be with God. You know that this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you the spiritual benefits of fasting right quick and we'll go. Number one, Fasting is a discipline of the body in order to humble the soul. Psalm 69.10. David said, I have humbled 
my soul with fasting. We have very little people, uh, discipline into the body this day and time. As a matter of fact, our generation discourages discipline of the body. They say, do whatever you want to. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's what people say. Anybody who's ever amounted to anything, any athlete, any musician, any has had to discipline their body. Paul said, I bring it under subjection. I'm not going to let my body rule me. I am going to rule my body. He said, I bring it under subjection. If all you do, you know, you know what a lot of people are. They're what we call belly worshipers. And you, you, you may think I'm being mean by that, but that's the Bible. In the Bible, in Romans chapter 16 and verse 18, he said, these are people that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Their belly is their God. That's, that's sickening to think about, but it's the truth. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 19 said, whose God is their belly. 1 Corinthians 6, 13 said, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. That's a verse, ain't it? Uh, where fashion is a discipline of the body. Ladies and gentlemen, here, here you say, here we go again. Yes, sir, and I'm excited about it. Here we go again. I'm excited about it. I want to see God do something. I've seen God do a work in that youth rally over there like, like very few places I've ever seen God move, and it don't just happen that night. It spills over into here the next week and the next week and the next week and the next week, and churches all over the country say, Brother Danny, we had the best service ever was. It's not because we're at the fairground. It ain't because we got hot dogs and hamburgers. It ain't because we have a funny skit. It ain't because uh, Hallelujah Howard's there. It ain't because it's because somebody, somebody burned the midnight oil and refused this flesh and said, Dear God, I want you more than I want the, to please this body. And it's a discipline for the soul. Number two, fasting helps you to prevail in prayer. This scripture that I read said, so we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated. Willing to separate and set aside our appetite and show sincerity. Well, in other words, when you get done, you say, this morning, today, I'm going to fast. Whatever, whatever day that you get. If you say, well, I work all day, preacher, and I can't. Yeah, you can. Don't say you can't, because you can. You just won't. And... Uh, if you fast one day and die, tell your family, call me and I'll preach your funeral free. That ain't what killed you. It's other stuff. But anyway, this, this, uh, this guy gets up and he says, I'm going to fast. And he says, Lord, I'll entreat, I'm entreating you. Please, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. There's people probably sitting in here this morning saying, Brother Danny, I don't see why you're so, what's, what's the big deal? I think everything's going great. I mean, you're, you're so far gone. You're so far off track. You don't even know where the track is. If you think everything's going great, you obviously don't, you, you're, you're missing it bad, buddy. You're missing it bad. Everything ain't great. Everything ain't going good. We need it. I need it. The pastor needs it. My family needs it. My girls need it. My grandkids need it. Our, our family members need it. Everybody needs it. It helps us to prevail in prayer. Number three, Fasting can bring mercy from God. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13, uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, I, I, just, I just don't care. I don't care. I don't like to read the Bible. I, don't, I just don't care. Well, fast a day or two till you do care. Say, God, make me care. God, help me to see souls that are dying. See our loved ones and our, our mothers and fathers sinking down. Brethren, will you pray uh, uh, that God showers manna all around? Ladies and gentlemen, we are in death desperate times, difficult times. The average church is deader than four o'clock. Nobody's hardly getting saved anymore in most places. I'm telling you, we can beseech our God for this and he'll be entreated of us. Number four, fasting will help free you from fleshly weaknesses. It sure will. There's no doubt about it. You have a lot of resentment, lying, jealousy, Pride, you think you're something special? Are you jealous of somebody? Do you have hate in your heart towards somebody? You have fleshly weaknesses. We all do. You know what you can do? You can say, Lord, 
I'm, I'm tired of this. Lord, I'm not going to live like this. And Lord, every time I think about it tomorrow, I'm going to pray. Instead of eat, I'll pray. Instead of eat, I'm going to pray. And I'll work. You know, you know the devil attacks you because he hates, he hates fasting. But listen, if you'll do that, the Lord will give you the victory. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6 said, he'll break that yoke. He'll break that yoke. It renews their mind. The gossipers can... can uh, uh, you know, turning in from a long-tongued gossiper to a good church member. The hard-headed old grouchy man uh, can get sweet and gentle. It's like a refining fire. It'll help you, brother. It'll help you, ladies and gentlemen. It'll help you. You have unnatural desires and wicked lust and stuff. Listen, listen, the average church today is filled with so many people that your head's so full of lust and sexual sins. People, you can't even come to church and keep a clean mind without lusting after every girl or ever, sometimes ever man. And I'm going to tell you, brother, you know good and well this country's eat up with that stuff and you, you do not have the power. You can't do it by yourself. The last thing you need to do is sit up and watch HBO all night. Last thing you need to do is be going through that phone and looking at those wicked pictures and all that. I tell you what you do. You get out and you say, God, I'm not eating. You get that filth out of my mind. You get those homosexual lusts out of my mind. You get those evil, unnatural thoughts out of my mind. Help me to do right and God will clean you up. Listen, he never said it'd be easy. It's a fight. You have to fight against lust. You sit there and say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're a weirdo is what you are. If you're a normal person in this day and time, you're going to fight against wicked de- desires. One guy said, uh, I don't ever have bad thoughts. Well, you're either, you're, you need to go to the doctor. There's something wrong with you. Or you're just a liar. Some of you folks sitting right here this morning, you've been looking at every filthy, wicked thing, and you think it don't hurt you? You think you can sneak around at night and get that stuff on your phone, and you just think, man, I like to look at that. I've had people tell me, they say, preacher, I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted. I'm, I'm an addict. I tell, you, well, I tell you what you better do. You better find you a prayer closet somewhere. You better get the victory. If you don't think that'll destroy your marriage, that ain't going to help your marriage. That's not going to help you as a person. It will pervert you. You know why? Because it keeps taking more and more and more to satisfy you. And you never, it's no end to that stuff. There's no into that stuff. That's why every serial killer, every serial killer in the history of our country has had that one thing in common. They all looked at pornography. All of them. Fasting will help you break that yoke. Lord have mercy. I've never seen a time when people's minds are just on something filthy and dirty all the time. Listen, if you're here this morning you're not married. You're not supposed to be messing around with somebody you're not married to. Amen. No. You're, you're perverted. It's perversion. And it's wickedness. And God still hates it. Fasting will help you. I'll tell you what you do. You say, well, Brother Danny, I've tried every way in the world to quit this, and I can't quit it. I'll tell you what you do. You agree with me. We're going to, is it, we have six weeks of youth rally. That's six, one day a week, six days. You fast and pray about it two or three days and in six weeks come tell me, tell me if you still can't get the victory over it. You know what a lot of people's problem is? They don't want no victory over it. They like it. I'm telling you, buddy, just because your flesh likes something don't mean it's good for you. I know, I know, I know this is rough. I know that, but I'm telling you, brother, there, there has never been a time when this world's as wicked as it is. I don't believe Sodom and Gomorrah had anything on the generation you and I are living in. Good Lord, I don't see how they didn't have internet, they didn't have cable TV, they didn't have satellite. Number five, fasting will help you overcome. Desire for excessive amounts of food. Homes should not be an all-you-can-eat buffet. You know, I don't, I don't, I just, I never thought about this not long ago. We had all these kids and, you know, and everything in the house. And I thought, I don't ever remember, I don't remember growing up, we could just run in the house and get anything we want anytime. We, it didn't, you did And the generation before me, some of y'all helped me, the generation before me, mom had supper on the table at 6 o'clock. 
And you better be sitting there and get your something to eat because you didn't. It was all put up and gone. You didn't get nothing. Some of y'all remember them days? You say, oh, how mean. We, it's, it, we just let our little darling lay on the couch and eat all the Doritos and ice cream it wants. Okay. Okay. Listen, I love ice cream, not Doritos. They stink. But I love ice cream. And sugar and caffeine and all, I mean, it's an addiction. You can't, good, not, have, have you ever done this? My girls, 15 years ago, whenever that, remember when that Atkins diet came out, everybody got on the Atkins diet, that Carrie and them told me, they said, Daddy, here's all you got to do. All you got to do, you, you don't eat, eat, eat no bread and don't eat no macaroni and cheese, no, no carbohydrate. And, and I, they said, you can eat cheese, you can eat meat. I said, really? That's my kind of diet right there. I can eat all the steak I want. And, she, and you know what I did? I went to Golden Corral, and I ate steak and green beans and steak and green beans and steak and green beans and steak and green beans, and I still wasn't full. I thought, man, my belly's hurting, and I still want some. You know what that was? I was craving that sweet. I was craving it. I really wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry. I couldn't be. I was about to throw up. Steak and green beans <laughs> and water. Steak and green beans and water and chicken. And, and all that's all I eat was green beans. And now it works. You can, you can lose weight like that. Ain't no doubt about it. I, 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 I lost a few pounds there. And, 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 but I'm telling you, I wanted something sweet. I felt like I'm not full yet. And I thought, what's making me want that? <gasps> I'm an addict. And I still like that today. There'll be certain days I said, all right, nothing sweet today. You do that? You ever do that? Nothing sweet today. I'm going to jerk up on it a little bit. Man, you eat and you eat. I ate them stupid barbecued pork skins. And I thought I, thought I was going to throw up and still couldn't get full. I was wanting something sweet. You got, you got to get the victory over that. Fasting helps you overcome the excessive amounts of food. A lust for food has sent many a Christian to an early grave. Dug with a spoon and a fork. Number six. Fasting can help reveal the will of God to you. Like Peter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 10, he, he, he became very hungry, the Bible said. He was up on the housetop praying and he became very hungry and wanted, man, I'm going to go down there and fix me a ham sandwich and, and I'm just going to fix me a Pepsi. Gosh, don't that sound good. Sounds good to me right now. Man, I could live off ham sandwiches and Pepsis and, and, and Fritos. I love them. I love Fritos and Cheetos and potato chips, anything like that. Salt and Pepsi, salt and Pepsi. I could live off that stuff. I could live off ham, salt, and Pepsi. Now, you ain't supposed to do that. That's crazy. But I could. I could. I love it. And old Peter's up there, and he said, Man, I'm hungry. I want to go down there and get something to eat. And then God put this big sheet out there and showed him all those creatures and everything. And you know what the Lord revealed to Peter, that Gentiles could be saved? They didn't even believe that till then. That God opened the door to the Gentiles and the will of God. Let me tell you something. Are you needing to find out the will of God about marriage, about school, about a job, about a home to buy? I tell you, you ain't going to find it watching TV. Fasting helps reveal the will of God. And then lastly, and I'm through, fasting can free us from the bondage of Satan and give us power over him. In Matthew chapter 17, it's an unusual story. The disciples went out there and this man came and the Lord done gave them power over demons. And they went out there, they was casting out demons right and left, doing miracles here and there. And there. Woo, glory to God, best revival we've ever seen in our life. And they tried to cast that down, and they couldn't do it. And they come to the Lord, and they said, Lord, what, what's the deal here? Because Jesus said, Get! And the demon got out of him. And they said, what's going on here, Lord? How come we couldn't cast him out? And he said, this kind, this kind. He said, now, now y'all been doing that other stuff, there, but this is a hard case here. Sort of like Burke County, this kind. Sort of like kids that go to your school, kids that, you know, your kids in your neighborhood. This kind, some of them bust in, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Neatly left out in the new Bibles. It says prayer and no fasting. 
There are some things that will never happen and be accomplished if somebody don't fast and pray. I got saved. Y'all have heard my testimony. I got saved at Nebo Baptist Church. I was 18 years old. I wasn't looking to be saved. There was something missing in my life. I'd heard about the Lord all my life. I'd been by that church up there in Nebo 10,000 times. We used to camp out and play basketball out there at the school. And we, these guys would take a, a, a ball and walk all over Nebo trying to get, go between your legs like this, you know, while you're walking, just like that, and go down the road. And I remember going up there behind that church and we'd sit up there behind that church, and I never felt no conviction. Never, I'd actually been to that church with a friend of mine a time or two, and the whole time we was there, I sit in the back. I don't remember one word that was said. We laughed. We cut up the whole time. But I tell you, that night I went to that revival meeting, and that group got up and started singing. I'm telling you, something got a hold of me. There was somebody there that night. It wasn't just a preacher. He didn't even preach before I got saved. I'd heard it all my life. And a singing group was up singing. And the Holy Ghost started moving. And people started going to the altar right and left. I, it wasn't no emotional. It wasn't just an emotional pull because of me. I, no, sir, brother. No, sir. Somebody was knocking on my door. I couldn't even hear that singing. Somebody was saying, Danny, let me in. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my... I mean, God was in that place that night. And I went down and I got saved saved. I got saved laying right there on the floor. The altar was full from side to side. Listen, people, it's been all those years, over 45 years ago, it's been that many years. I'm still going to church this morning. I have no plans of going in. Listen, something happened to me that night that was real. It was real. And I've seen it happen to a bunch more and I've still seen it happen once in a while. And you know what I didn't know? I didn't even know what fasting was then. And I, they told us about a month later, dear old sister that lives over on the hill behind Nebo Baptist Church, Miss Edwards, got under a burden for all of us kids there in Nebo. And she fasted three days. I didn't even know it. I didn't know what fasting was. I'd never heard of it. And they said, that woman fasted three days and nights. And she said she got under such a burden for the kids in Nebo. When she got done with three days and three nights, she said, God said, you ain't done three more and went six. Six days and nights. And buddy, I'm telling you, that dear old soul come in that church with her Bible up under her arm and from then on, buddy, I'd go hug her neck. I believe, I believe that God probably used that woman to keep me out of hell. He had to clear out a place. Fasting clears out a place so the Holy Ghost can come in and work. Just like you have to clear out a bunch of weeds, you know, to, to see that the sun shine in. We clear out the junk, brother. The Holy Ghost comes down. And I'm not going to hell this morning. I believe it'd be worth it. I believe it'd be worth it to miss a little bit. Maybe some kid. To, and that's not, I'm not trying to preach works or I'm not trying to, pick guilt on you, nothing like that. I'm just saying that we ought to want to, we ought to want God to work in our own life and in our kids' lives. So I want Brother Jason to come and here's what we're going to do. 40 days. I've never fasted 40 days, never even know we're near that. But we all can. And here's what I want to do. Is what's on my heart. I know people... Sometimes I get judged for this. People say, well, you're not supposed to tell nobody when you fast. I know Jesus said that, and he meant when I'm fasting, I'm not supposed to go around bragging about it and make sure everybody knows it. But there is public fast, like I'm getting ready to do today, called in the Bible. I just read you about one, where the leader of the group called a fast. It's public, and everybody knew it. Now, other fasting that you do between you and the Lord, and you ain't supposed to tell nobody else. Anoint your hair, brush your teeth, put a smile on your face. Nobody knows it but you and God. But we got 40 days starting tomorrow. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them to sing. And I want you to just bow your head, please, and search your heart right now. Go ahead, brother. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not even saved. Maybe you've never even been saved and all this is completely foreign to you. You need to come and get saved. Maybe you're here this morning and God's been dealing about other stuff in your life. It may not even be fast. Maybe it's be you just need to get your heart right. God's speaking to your heart. Just slide right out of your seat.
this a special service this morning. Somebody will be kept out of hell by what God does right here this morning. I don't doubt that one bit. As I kneel in the darkness Amen. in the middle oh, of God bless it. the bless night well. I'm praying oh, God bless it. for class. assurance oh, God, get a hold of your kids. everything's going to be alright others, others, others Lord, I see oh, God, another married. battle hey, listen. Listen, you out fast in front of God. me I'm afraid I won't be able to He said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you, just how far you've come. And every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? Why would you that be thinking and that, that I wouldn't Whatever see you through? Whatever the drug problems, listen, the Holy Ghost can set you free. Did come on, come on. not walk on the water, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. did come on. not calm the raging me. sea. Me. Come on. I spoke to the wind, come on. Come on. Come on. it hushed me. and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Yeah. Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you. What kind of addiction you got? So the you Holy Ghost fall. break that power. Didn't I leave Woo! all of heaven just to die for you your Put sin? Your I searched until I found you. And I do it all again. Yeah, Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Now she's Woo! talking to yeah, her father. Yeah, Lord God. Come on. In a come house on, that was a home. Yeah, she says, My bills are coming due, yeah, Lord. Six days just yeah, take Lord, that Lord. long. She hears a voice so still and low. Yeah, says, I've moved like. Amen. I'll do this little thing for you and I'll give you so much more. Amen. Didn't I walk on the Amen. water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke Amen. to the wind and hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run? Until I found you And I do it all again My goodness, say goodness You could not have sung a better song Perfect, perfect Just keep playing for a minute there, brother Perfect Listen My flesh is just like yours You gave all kinds of reasons When somebody said, well I can't fast Because I have to take medicine And the doctor said I was supposed to eat something That's just, I, that's a junk, I ain't that ain't true. I do it. I've done it a thousand times. Took medicine, just water. Goody powder on an empty stomach. Whatever. It ain't gonna kill you. You can do a little while. You you may not be able to go long because of a physical condition, but you can do some, and it'll help you. It'll help you. While he's playing softly, people still praying. You know what? I've got a. I mean, I get excited this time every year, but this year it seems like more than ever. Lord have mercy, I'm getting excited. I don't want the devil to have anything to do with that youth rally. Wouldn't it be nice to see the Lord just lift us all up and Come on. get all this junk out of us and make, hey, make us all love each other again? Wouldn't that be nice? Get the hard feelings out. Got hard feelings? It'll help you with that. The Lord will help you with that kind of stuff. You mad at somebody? The Lord will help you. Get over it, buddy. 
You want the Lord don't have a hard feeling against you? Don't have him against somebody else. He'll help you. All right, I, I, I know it's, it's a little bit late, so I want to go ahead and do this, and, and then we'll, we'll go. We've got 40 days. We're going to start tomorrow, going to the day of the youth rally. We're going to take the days of the week, whatever day you're willing to fast on, that day, I want you to raise your hand, not to be seen, just so I'll know. I just want to make sure we got somebody doing it every day. Saturday and Sunday's the hardest, but we always have people willing to step up and do it. So there's six Mondays, there's six Tuesdays, there's six Wednesdays, there's six Thursdays, there's six Fridays, there's six Saturdays, and there's six Sundays from now in the youth rally. Forty days, starting tomorrow. Uh, you can do it from Sunday night to Monday, like if you're going to do it tomorrow, Sunday night, tonight, till tomorrow night, that's 24 hours. You can do it Sunday night, all day Monday and Monday night till Tuesday morning, that's a full day. Whatever God puts on your heart. But let's start right now. Who? We don't want to, I hope too many on one day. How many will take Monday? Raise your hand, please. Thank you. Tuesday, would you raise your hand, please? Thank you. Perfect. Wednesday, all right. Perfect. Thursday, Thursday, there's some. All right. If you want to take two days, that's great. Friday. Friday's a hard day. All right. Saturday. Thank you. Sunday. We got it. We got it. That means every time God looks down here, from now to the 27th of April, somebody's going to be fasting and praying. I'm going to talk about praying tonight. If you've got kids, grandkids, or anybody that's not right with God, you need to be here tonight. Be here at 6 o'clock. We are having choir practice, so everybody that's in the choir, be here. Now, next Sunday night, we've got the youth service. The next Sunday's Easter, so we can't have the choir practice until almost the middle of April, y'all. So we're going to have like two more. So tonight's important that you be here for choir. Okay? It's on from here on. All right? Let's all stand. Amen. We'll be dismissed.